It's vitally important that rural America be able to fully engage in the new energy economy and that woody biomass is a key issue in that respect. I strongly believe that states with large tracts of forests can be the center of the solution as our national energy policy shifts and adjusts in ways that enhance our national and economic security, as the Secretary mentioned, that promote both innovation and conservation and the jobs that will be developed as a result, and that ultimately ease the strain on families and business owners' budgets because of the increasing in volatile markets and energy that we saw over the past year. As you know, I've been working hard in Congress to fix that renewable biomass definition uh, for transportation fuels that was included in the 07 Energy Bill. Late in the legislative process, while the final version of that bill was being worked out, a provision was added, unfortunately added without input, from a broad range of stakeholders. This bottom of the ninth provision basically prohibits woody biomass from much private land forests and national forests, including the Black Hills National Forest in South Dakota, to be counted toward the mandates and requirements set forth in the timetable of the Renewable Fuel Standard. Unfortunately, the forested states seeking to participate fully in the new energy economy and help achieve the targets set forth in the Renewable Fuel Standard, uh, for them, the energy bill represented a lost economic opportunity. To address this shortcoming, I reintroduced with Greg Walden of Oregon my legislation, H.R. 1190, the Renewable Biomass Facilitation Act, which revises the definition of renewable biomass in the energy bill to allow virtually all private land biomass that is used as a feedstock for biofuels to count toward the mandate and to allow federally sourced biomass, and that would include trees, wood, brush, thinnings, and slash that's removed as a result of approved preventative treatments to count toward the renewable fuels mandate provided it's used for the production of biofuels. And when I say preventative treatments, that includes reducing hazardous fuels, minimizing or containing disease or insect infestation, or restoring ecosystem health. My bill does not change federal forest management policy. In fact, I believe this bill, if enacted, could incentivize better and more responsible public forest land management. In my district, our forest products industry primarily functions on forest service land. With regard to our federal forest lands, I would offer that what we are doing now is not sustainable. If you look at the lack of funding to manage hazardous fuels and resulting fires, if you look at the pine bark beetle ravaging Colorado's lodge pole pine and swiftly moving to other forests, one wouldn't be hard pressed to argue, one would be hard pressed to argue that the current state of affairs on our federal lands are environmentally sustainable. Sadly, another facet of sustainability that's often forgotten is the sustainability of rural communities. Woody biomass production represents an opportunity for many communities to create jobs as we move toward energy independence and a low carbon uh, future. In conclusion, I want you to be rest assured uh, that I am going to continue to work with all of you, to continue to work with FR FRA and others. Uh, to ensure that this same problematic definition we're trying to fix is not included in a renewable electricity standard in an energy bill that is moving forward in the Energy and Commerce Committee. Now, I believe that an RES or an RPS, whatever you choose to call it, if, if it's done right, can tap into this amazing solar and wind energy potential. And you saw the map, South Dakota's got among the best wind energy potential in the country. If done right, it can be a key component to ensuring renewable energy, to promoting renewable energy, and addressing climate change in an economically responsible manner. Moreover, as it stands now, there is one definition of biomass in the RFS, another and better definition of biomass in the 2008 Farm Bill, and potentially a third definition then in an RES. Now, I think we can all agree that that certainly serves as a disincentive for investors and for those that are looking at cellulosic ethanol development if they're trying to deal with three different definitions that different agencies are trying to administer. So we simply have to get this right. This is the vehicle to do it. I've mentioned to Chairman Markey uh, that I've had conversations with the speaker where we've been given assurances we'd have a chance to fix this definition and his bill is the place where it has to be done. And his bill has to change it if it's going to get my support and others' support to advance it on the House floor. 
Clearly, uh, experience has shown with respect to the RFS, those of us who favor fixing that